everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the June 2019 Chemnitz Dialogue. This month we looked at a beautiful rainbow. Uh, this scene has blue water, green trees, and sort of a stormy gray sky. I wanted to pick a rainbow for June in honor of LGBTQ Pride Month and to show my respect and support for the community. In June, I made a donation to The Trevor Project, an organization that provides crisis intervention to LGBTQ and questioning youth. Uh, there are hotlines so people can reach out and have someone anonymously to talk to when they are in need. I think it's a really phenomenal organization and you can find a link to it in the video description. In the first live stream this month, I wanted to focus on some food coloring and look at these rainbows in a more abstract slash cartoonish way. And I dyed some sock blanks and some roving for the first time in a Chemnitz dialogue. I decided to use Easter egg dye tablets with 200 grams of 100% wool roving, and I laid these hanks out in a very interesting way. The first I laid out sort of like this, folding it lengthwise. The second I did shorter folds, um, so that way we would get more of a full gradient versus a repeating gradient. One of the big reasons why I ended up going for food coloring this time is that the AC went out in my home for this live stream. Um, and yeah, so that is a big factor. But you can see that the water has, all right, we might have a tiny bit of blue, but the water has mostly cleared. And we got really, really good color penetration all the way through. Yeah, just that hint of blue isn't bad. In the end, I think there were 12 cups of water plus three cups of vinegar in this pan. So that is something to keep in mind. But Easter egg dye tablets, Easter egg dye tablets do have sodium, sodium bicarbonate in them, and so it does raise the pH. But now I'm gonna go wash this off camera, put it through the spin dryer, hang it up to dry, on day two, I looked at some Dharma Acid dyes uh, to create some beautiful rainbows. And I dyed both a sock yarn and this sock blank, which I'm unraveling for the first time, with the dry acid dye powder. And ooh, look how pigmented this is. There is definitely gonna be white behind um, when we unravel this blank, but these colors are truly fantastic. And, oh, I do have a little bit of pigment on my hands. Probably should have worn some gloves. I'm not sure if this is unbound pigment from the yarn itself, or if this was just um, some of the other powder dye that was left on that plastic bag. But you can see we do have a bit of bleeding here. Um, so if we need to, we can always soak this in vinegar and um, reheat it. But um, I'm going to start trying to wash and try to get the water to go clear, you know. But so far, that's already lighter than the first fat, so we will see. But oh, this is beautiful. I momentarily tossed on a little vinegar, and you can see that we are now clear. So that is awesome. I'm gonna go put this through my spin dryer and then hang them up to dry. After night two, I started washing this skein and in the water vinegar pre-soak, there was some bleeding. Now, I don't know if this is just some undissolved powders because it had not been immersed in anything yet or if it's just some bleeding. I poured some straight vinegar over the skein and I'm probably gonna pour a little bit more and then I'm gonna go ahead and steam this again. But this time I'm not gonna wrap it in plastic wrap first. I figure better be safe and steam again than be sorry later. I let the yarn stay in the steamer basket overnight. So soaked with all of that vinegar. The nice thing is that that bleeding we saw, I was able to remove it fairly quickly so it didn't you know, ruin this beautiful, beautiful rainbow. And it seems like that extra soak and then vinegar soak has done the trick. It's possible there was probably a clump of dye or something on there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add some dish soap. 
and I'll do some extra rinses to make sure the bleeding doesn't start happening again. But I'm feeling very optimistic. Yep, that is definitely clear. Yarn mops are truly fantastic things. As I was speckling the skein, I had dye powder on my hands. So I pre-soaked a skein of Knit Picks Hawthorne yarn in some water with vinegar and then wiped my fingers on it through that whole dyeing process. And we ended up with this really random, beautiful, stunning, leave no dye behind skein. Because otherwise that dye in my fingers would have just been washed down the drain and we wouldn't have created this magic. So it is always worth considering the materials that you're using and what you have access to um, and ways that you can use things that maybe otherwise you would discard because some of my favorite colorways ever have come from, okay, I wanna use up this dye, how should I do that? On the rainbow yarns from the second live stream, you can really get a sense of my too much gene. <laughs> Uh, someone said during the stream if I wondered if I was going to be adding too much dye. I probably added a little too much dye. Ooh, especially with this intense iris. It didn't seem to be sinking in, so I kept adding more and more and more. Oh, it's just funny. Um, I will still love how this turned out. Even if I may have been going for something a little quieter, I'm thrilled for the yarn to be loud. But I think the winner of the show is this yarn mop. Uh, I wish that this could have been on camera more, but as I was speckling the yarn on for the skein, I would get powder on my gloves. And I had a skein of Knit Picks Bare Hawthorne, pre-soaked with vinegar, and I took my fingers and just wiped the dye off on here, randomly, turning it occasionally so that way we could use up white areas. It's just breathtaking. I, I think there's something magical about creating something when my attention is somewhere else. Because I could create something like this again. I could grab these nine colors, stick some fingers in there, and randomly wipe it onto a skein of yarn. But some of that randomness would definitely be lost because my attention and my focus was on this skein, not the yarn mop. Um, don't get me wrong, I am in love with this repeating speckled rainbow gradient that's on the Dyer Supplier 7525 uh, yarn base, sock base, and I just, I think that it's interesting and I wonder if I can do more colorways where I really disconnect my brain from the process and really let the material speak to me as I go. Can you believe that I never have dyed roving with Easter egg dye tablets? This worked great. Uh, we've got excellent pe color penetration going through, and I haven't even fluffed these up yet. This is just how the roving came out of the spin dryer, and it's fluffy and wonderful. Yeah, there's some light patches, but oof, I love it. It was also a lot of fun to do these two different ways of dyeing the fiber in one pan. In this one we got a gradient, in this one we've got more of a repeating kind of colorway. Uh, in both the yellow, poor yellow, those greens tend to spread out and we often don't get as much yellow in the final yarn as I would like, but they're rainbowlicious, they are beautiful. And you could totally spin these together or separately and create something absolutely wonderful. I love rainbows so much and making rainbow gradient sock links has to be one of my favorite things. And besides, it's probably broken violet. I think doing some kind of sprayed rainbow gradient using the color mist sprays is one of the colorways I've done the most frequently. Even though I was sorely tempted to do that again with the color mist sprays for this live stream, I decided to play with rainbows in a slightly different way. First, I did an abstract version of this scene where we've got the greenery, I suppose I put this upside down, but we've got the, <laughs> the greenery of the land and the blue of the sky um, with the rainbow coming through. And so with this one, as you're knitting, you'll have sections with a lot of green or sections with a lot of blue, but then there'll be little rainbows that go through as you go back and forth and unravel this blank. With this other rainbow where we almost have the double rainbow, 
I should have flipped it. I guess I didn't realize that I would be able to get this little shadow of a rainbow um, until I had actually flipped it and pressed it down. So I wish that I had sort of pressed it on sort of a different angle so then it would be a little bit more like a double rainbow, but it's still really fun. Um, in the negative space, you can see a hint of a pale green, but the green is a lot more intense on the wrong side because that's where I sprayed this blank. There will be a dedicated video of me spraying both sides of a blank coming up uh, later this summer. And yeah, that one involves a rainbow too, but I wanted to play around with this in a different kind of way. And I will be going and unraveling all of these blanks uh, before the end of this recap. Originally, when I did this live stream, I wanted to play with acid dyes. I do rainbows with food coloring in so many different ways. Easter egg dye tub, lots of color mist sprays, mixing the colors. But I hadn't really played with a full rainbow using my acid dyes, and I really, really wanted to do that. Unfortunately, the AC was broken and I didn't want to wear my mask, so I did that first live stream with food coloring. Then came the acid dyes, and the AC is all fixed, so that's great. <laughs> but I think I have a little bit of a too much gene, because I was speckling the color on here, on my tabletop, and I remember thinking, oh, I want sort of heavy coverage, I don't want the speckles to be too light, but clearly we got excellent cover coverage all over the blank. Um, if we flip it, you can see that, that we do have color on the other side, but there is definitely some white left. So I believe that this will be nice and speckled when we unravel it. While we're thinking about wrong sides, this rainbow does have some nice color penetration, but the colors are less pigmented on the back than the front, so I am expecting we're gonna see some white in here. Now, will it be a little bit of white speckling? Or will the color feel more like the speckled? That's what we'll see once we unravel it. Of the three blanks, I had to unravel the rainbow speckled by hand. I mean, just look at this. This is stunning. The speckles are definitely less regular than the speckles that I get from spraying the front of the blank. There you feel more of like an alternating color kind of situation. But here, this is beautiful, and I cannot wait to play with this more in the future. And as always, the best part of doing a double-stranded soft blank is that when you unravel it, you get these two matched 50 gram skeins. So it doesn't matter if my orange section is a tiny bit smaller than the red and the purple, because the gradients will be the same on both of these skeins. Here we've got our green rainbow, and here's the one that was our more cartoony. Although the blanks themselves do look quite different, they feel more similar in blank form, but on this pale green one, you can see the white from the front and how those green speckles are have a much more regular pattern, and same with the other colored speckles because of how it came from the blank itself. Our green rainbow, we sprayed the front and the back of the blank, and if you look at these places with the more brightly colored speckles, you do see those hints of pastel green behind it. And again, you can see how regular all of these specks are. And over here again, you can see sort of the alternating nature because we colored the front and back side of the blank. And now we have come to my favorite part of the Cabinet's Dialogue live stream recap, where I am going to feature some of your work and the beautiful skins that you created inspired by the same double rainbow photo. Some of you went for it and went for the rainbow. Others of you tried to do something inspired by the entire photograph. And some of you went for more of the hint of the twinkle of the rainbow in the water or in the sky. No matter what, there is a huge amount of variety in the colorways that we all created. And so it's just really wonderful to see what will inspire someone, a bunch of people, a group of people looking at one photo. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you really enjoyed the two Chemnitz Dialong live streams that we did for June 2019. I had so much fun creating these rainbows with acid dyes and food coloring, and I'm just also really excited to create more rainbows in the future. 
If you want to participate in next month's Chemnitz Dialogue, uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'm at Chemnitz on Instagram. I'm just Chemnitz on Facebook. I will post the July inspiration photo on all my social media accounts around the 15th of the month. Which one of these yarns or rovings is your favorite? I would be, oh, I would really, really struggle to pick a favorite. I honestly enjoy dyeing rainbows so, so much. And it's why I come back to doing this over and over again. Again, if you enjoyed these videos, please go over and check out the Trevor Project and consider making a donation. The work that they do to support LGBTQ and questioning youth is so important. And I really hope that you will consider um, making a donation. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And thank you so much for watching, everyone.